Good afternoon, and welcome to the uh, presentation from the International Business Administration program here at RSM. Um, we're the business faculty of the Erasmus University, and this presentation today is going to be about the admissions requirements and how to apply to the IBA program. So. Um, this is not about the content and, and that sort of thing. So we have another, we had two other sessions already about the program content. And if you miss those sessions, um, you will, everyone who's going, who signed up today will get um, a link to our live stream, um, which is being recorded right now. So you don't have to miss anything if you miss the general presentation. Um, I would like to also welcome our uh, audience who is not here today, but who is uh, watching the presentation through the live stream. Um, so people around the world are joining us here right now. Um, and this is a really international program, so I always like to see how many international people are in the audience. How many people came here from abroad today? Stick your hand up. Wow, <laughs> quite a lot of people. Awesome. Okay, well that shows you basically how, how the IBA program is. It's an extremely international program, so you can already see that in the audience of our open day. My name is Amy Janssen Brennan. I'm the um, Assistant Director of the Recruitment and Admissions Department, and my team does the selection. So today I'm going to tell you what you have to do to get into the IBA program. Um, yeah, those of you who are from the Netherlands probably are aware of something called numerous fixes programs, but those of you from abroad maybe not, not don't understand what that is, so I'll explain that in my presentation. Um, I will tell you about our admissions requirements. I'll show you how to see for yourself if you're actually eligible, so the eligibility check. I'll tell you how we do our selection, how we make the ranking, um, how to actually apply to the application process, and then give you some tips and stuff on how to apply. Um, if you have a question during the presentation, hold it in your head, and at the end, when I'm finished, if you still have the question, um, then feel free to ask it. So my presentation will be about 25 minutes today. So, what is numerous fixes? Um, in the Netherlands, uh, the government has made a few different uh, selection methods that universities and hochschulen can choose from. One is called the numerous fixes, and that basically means we have a set number of students we can let in, and there are some, some, we have some flexibility as a university as to what criteria we use to select our students, but we have to um, adhere to certain de uh, guidelines. One of the guidelines is the deadline to apply. So if you want to do a numerous fixes program, um, you must register in the national uh, database called StudyLink, and if you start to study in the Netherlands, this will become your best friend because you have to register in StudyLink every single year. So that's the first step, is registering in StudyLink. You have to do that by the 15th of January. If you're not in StudyLink for a numerous fixes program by the 15th of January, you can't apply anymore. That's it. Midnight, that's cut off. So keep that in mind. Um, that's one of the things that's uh, nationally set. The other thing that's nationally set is the day that uh, the results are announced. This happens for all numerous fixes uh, programs, so also uh, medicine, psychology, uh, IBA, all at, on the 15th of April. So everyone will hear on that day. And then um, we have to rank our applicants according to certain criteria. Um, at the IBA, uh, for IBA, we have chosen uh, grades, grade point average, and your motivation uh, for the pro uh, program. So I'll get into those things uh, a little bit later. So what are the admissions requirements? Now, if you're studying in the Netherlands, you need a Favio diploma. And we have uh, a lot of our applicants come from all over the world. We have a lot of students with IB diplomas, so international baccalaureate, uh, German abitur, uh, French baccalaureate, Belgian ASO, um, European baccalaureate, etc. So um, on our website, and I'll show you that a little bit more in a second, um, you can see if your national diploma qualifies you for admission. So that's the first thing. Secondly, mathematics is very important to the IBA program. Um, so you have to have a certain level of mathematics. And if you're doing Fabio, you need Viscunda A, with a minimum unrounded grade of at least a seven, or Viscunda B, which uh, with a minimum unrounded grade of six. If you're doing the IB, which is the second largest diploma that we accept, um, you need analysis and approach to standard level five or higher level four, or application and interpret interpretations higher level five. Um, and then we also require a high level of English because this is an English taught program. So if you're doing Favio, you need to have, have an ungrounded, uh, unrounded grade of seven. And if you did a full IB in English, so not just the IB certificate for English, but a full IB, um, then you are exempt from English, and otherwise, 
Um, if you're doing an IB that was taught in a different language or just the IB English certificate, um, then you need English standard level grade five or higher level four. And if you don't have those things, you can also prove your proficiency in English by taking an English standardized test. And we accept uh, IELTS, TOEFL, and Cambridge. So as you said in the beginning, we have this thing called a little sort of eligibility checker on our website. And we've put in a really lot of time and effort into um, putting very clear um, instructions on the website. So basically, um, for 95% of the diplomas in the world, you can go to our website and see, okay, I have this specific diploma, and what are the specific criteria? Once in a while, we find a, a uh, we come across a diploma we've never seen before, so in that case we may have to do some more research into what the level is, but most of the time you can just go to the website and see your specific uh, program. So this is a screenshot of that, the actual website, so you can see this. Um, you go to admissions requirements for diploma, and then you can find your specific diploma, and once you do that, this is what you'll see. So per um, specific diploma you will get this little a blip of information, so I've put the Favio here, um, but you don't have to remember all this because it's on the website. But anyway, just so you, to give you an idea, you see what we require for mathematics. Um, and if you don't meet the requirements for your diploma for mathematics, you can compensate by taking the IBA math exam. And this is an exam that um, an external company uh, does for us called Sojo. They do actually math exams for most of the Dutch research universities and hobbios um, these days. It's an it's a exam you can do at home. It's proctored, so you can't cheat. So um, you have to get a 75%. If you do that, then you're considered to be sufficient in math, regardless of your actual math level or uh, grade will then consider that you're sufficient. Same goes for English. Uh, for certain diplomas, you always have to take an English exam. Other diplomas like Fabio, if you get a seven, you're considered sufficient. If you don't have the seven, you can prove that you actually are good in English by taking a standardized test. And then for every diploma, we also have a selection point set, a section. And the selection points, that's how we do the actual ranking. So uh, for every diploma, you get points if you, your GPA is at least the minimum. So if you have a Dutch Favio diploma, we start giving selection points for students who have a seven or higher. And we make these decisions based on the grades that you earned in your penultimate year, so five Favio, and uh, all the grades that you earned uh, in your sixth video or your last year until uh, Christmas. So uh, people are always wondering, okay, so but which, which uh, grades do I show? Well, in the Netherlands, it's easier. Your schools, schools understand if we say, we want the exam and dossier ciphers. So this is um, basically your PTAs that you have in the fourth year, fifth year, the school, school exam ciphers, uh, everything you have until the sixth year. So everything that's in, in most schools gives, give their final grades either right before Christmas or right after Christmas. So those are the grades that we make the decision on. If you've already got your diploma, then we'll use your final exams grades. Here's another example, and I won't leave this slide up for too long, but it's basically the same idea, uh, same information, but for the International Baccalaureate Diploma. So, in a nutshell, how do you check for yourself? Go to the website, so rsm.nl slash IBA, and check your mathematics exam. If you don't meet the requirements for math, you can compensate by taking the math test. Um, and if you do need to take a math exam or the English exam, you have until the 1st of April to ha hand in those exams grades. So you have to apply by the 31st of January, but we give you until the 1st of April to um, take those standardized exams if you need to. So make sure you apply on time, submit your application, but you have a little bit longer to give us the standardized test results. Um, the math test, you, could, you get your results usually within a few days. Uh, but the standardized English tests, A, those, those test sites can fill up quite quickly. So if you need to take an English exam, apply for a, an exam on time. And it also takes sometimes a couple of weeks to get the results. So you need to make sure you do all these things well in advance. Because, yeah, the deadlines for the numerous fixes are completely set in stone and there's absolutely zero leeway to submit things later. So now you know what the admissions requirements are. How do we actually do the ranking? Well, as I said, every um, university that has selection based on numerous fixes has to have at least two selection criteria. 
Um, we've chosen grades, and that, we've, that weighs very heavy here, 75%, and 25% motivation. Um, a lot of people um, ask us, well, why, is, why are the grades so important? Grades don't mean anything. Well, actually, there's been a lot of scientific studies uh, done about, um, yeah, how uh, effective, how, how much can uh, do grades predict or motivation. Um, the only uh, factor or criteria that actually has any uh, predictive um, sense, that is actually grades. Uh, motivation has been proven to actually not show any, there's no correlation between grades and study success. So that is why we put so much emphasis on the grades. So uh, basically, if you've meet, met all of our requirements, your diploma is okay, English level is okay, math is okay, then we rank you on your grade point average. So uh, we'll use all of your uh, grades that you earn, so even gym counts. Um, the only thing we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't count for Dutch students is the Rekentoets. I don't even know if that's on the grade list anymore, but if it is, we ignore that grade. But we do use all the courses, so including gym. Um, so that's how we do your uh, grades. And um, so any, if you have like a 7.1, then you get more points than if you have a 7.0. And the more, higher your grades, the more points you get. Um, I put some, uh, some examples of other international diplomas here on the slide. Um, and motivation, that counts for 25%. And you can, you can um, choose to prove that in one or two ways. So either by submitting your CV or um, your motivation question. We do ask all applicants to hand in their CV, but we won't grade your CV unless you want to be uh, you know, if you want to use that to prove your motivation. The reason why we ask everyone to send in a CV is because sometimes um, applications are a bit, you know, not really clear, so uh, we can sometimes, you know, make some sense out of a dossier because of the information on the CV. So that's why we ask everyone to submit it. Now, the question of the hour, which do I choose? CV, motivation. Um, in general, I mean, it doesn't matter to us, you can get as many points on both uh, both ways, but in general, people who, for example, uh, are doing a bilingual uh, program or studied in an international school, um, maybe have traveled a lot, have, have done things like that, a lot of international experiences, those are the students who tend to choose the, the CV because they've already proven that they enjoy these kinds of things because they're already doing it. And students who maybe haven't had these opportunities in high school, uh, but they really want to do it, they, would, they generally choose to do the motivation question. So those students uh, can express why this is their ambition. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what you should do. But it doesn't matter to, it, to us which you choose. And a little tip about CV. Um, yeah, some people submit you know, a 10-page CV, but you know, you guys are just high school students, probably haven't run in, in multinational companies, so you don't need a 20-page CV. Keep it short. Think of the admissions staff, we have to read everything. So <laughs> the motivation question, that is actually set, so we can't get a 20-page motivation, so we've saved ourselves on that. Okay, so first step, registration and study link. A deadline, 15th of January. The next step, very important, actually the most important step, is then to complete your application in our online application form, which we fondly called OLAF. And this is a screenshot of OLAF. So when you go in, this is what you're going to see. Um, here, this is where you, you know, tell us your name, your date of birth, you have to upload your CV, your, you have to answer the motivation question, add your grades, all this stuff. This is what you do, you do it in OLAF. And the application deadline for OLAF is the 31st of January. Another deadline that's set in stone. If you, you know, wait to the last minute and your Wi-Fi dies, you're out of luck. So don't wait to the last minute. Um, this is where you, you know, upload everything. And when you're uploading documents, please, you know, use your common sense. Uh, look at the document before you upload it. We've had sometimes, you know, people who upload something and it's this big, and so we can't read it, and it's, the deadline's passed, so they can't get in because we don't know what their grades were. So don't make that mistake. And also, please try to have your documents the right, right way around. <laughs> Otherwise, it's really annoying to admission staff. Um, also, if you have a multi-page grading list, make it as one document because it's really annoying when you're you know, going through thousands of applications and you have to like, click open 12 different grading lists. That's not very nice. So be nice to the admission staff and make a nice, neat dossier. The ranking itself. 
This is something that people find very frightening, <laughs> our tears. What are the tears? Um, it's actually quite straightforward. The reason why we made these tears in the first place is uh, because we put so much emphasis on the final grade point average, we wanted to make sure that somebody who had super high grades but, for example, didn't meet our requirement for mathematics was still good in the program. So that's why we made these sort of barriers. Um, you're only in tier one if you meet all of our requirements. So math is good, English is good, a general uh, level of your diploma is good, and you meet our GPA requirements. Otherwise, you're in tier two. Tier two is either your English isn't okay or your, um, uh, your GPA isn't okay. Tier three, math isn't okay. Tier four, math and English weren't okay. Tier five, either it was you, we couldn't... We couldn't even read what you submitted, or you're not actually eligible for admission. So you don't want to be in Tier 5 for sure. But actually, you don't want to be in any tier except for Tier 1. Um, last year, we had about 1,200 students in Tier 1. Um, we had about 2,700 applications in total. So yeah, there's no chance of selection if you're not in Tier 1. Uh, there are application deadlines. As I said, um, study link, that is the first step. It's already open, so if you already know, yeah, I want, to, I want to do IBA, then register today in StudyLink, start the application process. Deadline to be in StudyLink is the 15th of January. Um, the next important deadline is, of course, the actual submission of your application. That must be done by the 31st of January. And then um, you have until um, the 1st of April to submit additional documents for English and mathematics if you need to do that. Uh, between the 1st of April and the 14th of April, um, the admission staff makes the actual ranking. We have to upload it into StudyLink. And the actual ranking itself is given to, uh, is, is given to you through StudyLink. So at midnight on the 15th of April, this machinery of StudyLink turns on and it starts spitting out all the rank numbers. So if you've applied, you'll get a rank number. Uh, the best one, uh, 750 people will also, at the same time, get a second email with your, your, your um, offer of admission. And you have two weeks to accept your uh, offer of admission. If you do not, some people with every year, wonders, wondrously, <laughs> we have students who just didn't look at their email. And they wanted to come, but they didn't see the email, and it was the 16th, and yeah, if you don't do it within two weeks, it disappears. This is a runaway train, we cannot stop, so yeah, there's nothing we can do. Um, we have uh, something I forgot to mention in the beginning. If you, uh, and one of the other uh, rules of the numerous fixes, you can only apply to two. So um, say you uh, really want to do an international business administration program, you applied here and for Maastricht, for example, or the UFA, um, you can only apply to two. Um, but say you get into Maastricht, but you're, you really want to go to RSM. Um, you can, uh, but you're here on the waiting list, you can accept Maastricht, but stay on the waiting list here. That means don't unregister for RSM and StudyLink. And you can stay on our waiting list, and if your number's called, you can say no to Maastricht and come here. Uh, but if you unregister, again, your number will be skipped if it comes up. That's, we also have students every year who call us and say, yeah, I really wanted to come, but my number was skipped. Yeah, it's because you unregistered, so don't unregister. Um, so, yes, on the 15th of April, that's when everything starts going. And as soon as somebody, one of the 750 students, says they don't want to come or don't respond, then the, offer is, the next offer is given to the next person on the waiting list. And every year, um, we, well, last year we, we gave out 984 offers of admission at the end. So the last offer will be given on uh, the 7th of August. And on our website, you can see what number has been given out, so you can sort of keep that in mind. Um, and then um, in May and August, that's when you need to send us your diplomas, because most of you haven't graduated yet, so we need to obviously um, see that you actually you know, earned your high school diploma. Uh, students always want to know, what if my grades go down? Yeah, that can happen. Um, and you, but you've already got your offer, so you know, we, can't re, we can't take your offer back. Um, sometimes people's math grades do go down, and then we send you a warning mail like, you know, look, your math is not so good anymore. Make sure your math is, you know, you, you, you keep your math level up, so maybe you need some self-study in the summer, but we will not um, pull back our offer. Unless, of course, you don't actually graduate, and that's a different story. 
So tips for your application. Apply early. Do not wait till the last minute. Um, yeah, this is not a time in your life to procrastinate. You want to really, really do this on time. Because I said, these deadlines, yeah, they're set in stone. We can't do anything about it. Um, you can start your application today and do it in multiple settings. So say you don't have all your grades yet. No problem. You can just sort of you know, start it today and keep adding to it. Um, no, no worries. Um, if you have questions, please look at the information on the website. Uh, we've put a lot of time and effort into putting everything, you know, all the information there. Um, we do receive a crazy amount of emails every day, and it's, it's kind of frustrating to admission staff because a lot of times these questions could have easily been answered by you if you'd actually bothered to look on the website. So please only send us an email if you really can't find uh, the question. Um, yeah, again, never cancel in StudyLink. If there's any chance that you might want to accept your offer and you have between numbers 1,000 and, and uh, 1, then you have a chance of selection. So don't unregister. If you have obviously number 3,000, then go ahead because you won't, you won't get an offer. But if you have one in the, that range, yeah, definitely don't unregister. And be patient because, um, yeah, the, really, that the, it doesn't feel like it. Like if you get number 900, you may feel like, oh, I have no chance. But yeah, the chance of selection is quite high. You just may not uh, get an offer until you know quite late. So be patient and follow your number on the website. Practical matters. Yeah, how much does it cost to study IBA? Uh, the annual tuition fee is 10,600 euros. However, the Dutch government. Uh, because this is a publicly funded university, uh, gives all European nationals a huge scholarship, and the tuition for European nationals is only 2,209 euros per year. That's for your first bachelor. So if you've already earned a bachelor in the Netherlands, then the price is higher. Um, we do have some scholarships for non-European citizens. There are not a lot of them, however, so if you're looking to do for a scholarship, make sure you apply on time and, and you know, read the uh, requirements we have for each of the scholarships. <laughs> Um, our non-EA nationals um, will also need to have a visa and residence permit to study here, and we will help you um, apply for that. We also have some uh, housing for our international students. There is some on-campus housing. However, also that is quite scarce, so if you're interested in that, you need to apply on time for it. And that's also my, uh, I mean, everyone in the Netherlands has heard on the news how a scarce student housing is, even for Dutch students. So, um, I mean, Rotterdam is, is the same as other large cities, so we also have the same problem. Um, there is housing, but you really need to look on time. And um, it's better to pay maybe a couple months extra rent than to arrive in August and not have a house. And also, another tip is look to neighboring uh, cities like Schiedam or Capelle on the IJssel. That might be easier to find um, a house there if you can't find one right away uh, in Rotterdam itself. So, um, if after this um, open day you still have questions about admissions or anything else, uh, we have virtual information sessions, which we give every, uh, the first Thursday of every month. Those are given live. Uh, so, there's a Q&A session afterwards. Uh, we give those every uh, month in September and January. So, this presentation will be given, and we also have the main presentation that my colleague Adri Maidam uh, gave before me today. So you can do that again, and we'll also send everyone who signed up for the open day the, the link so you can watch it again at your leisure. Um, you can also contact our student ambassadors uh, through UniBuddy, um, through our website. And if you have a very important question that you couldn't find the answer to yourself on the website, you can also um, contact admissions staff. We also have some limited telephone hours, so lots of ways to contact us. So the Q&A. We have some student ambassadors who will run around with microphones. So we have ah, quite a long time for questions. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Hello, that's work. OK. Um, if you get an offer and you actually decide that you want to go a year later, can you defer your offer or do you have to start over again? No. Uh, you, yeah, you, you can't, the numerous fixes uh, selection method doesn't uh, allow for that. Another thing, uh, we're, we're not, as a university, we're not happy at all with the numerous fixes. <laughs> it was the only method we, because we're so huge and popular, we had to choose some selection and this is the only one that we could 
get. But we are in the process of applying for a different kind of selection method. So for those of you who are not applying for this coming semester of September, uh, make sure you look at the website for um, like in the su next summer, because hopefully we will have a different kind of selection method, uh, which will be more student friendly. Um, uh, the, the, to which the, the actual requirements are not going to change for the GPA and the grades and that, that'll stay the same and that your English and math requirement, but um, we'll be able to hand out offers, you know, we'll have to wait to the 15th of, of April if we get the new selection method, so fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Next question. Uh, okay, can, you can hear me. Uh, what's the Cambridge level uh, necessary to apply? Uh, off the top of my head, I think for the IB, it's 170 for all uh, subscores and overall. Uh, yeah, again, off the top of my head, so check on the website, <laughs> but I think that's what it was. We have to remember a lot in the admissions office, so. <laughs> um, yeah. Is the IGCSE accepted as an English proficiency test? Yeah, if you study in, uh, in you're doing the A-levels, then uh, you've done your entire education in English, then... Uh, we will accept that, but or you just have a certificate. Yeah, just the English oh. certificate. Sorry, just the English certificate. Uh, no. For language and literature. No, no. Okay. Other questions? Just put a couple back there. Um, you may have said this, but I may have missed it. Um, if you um, don't get in this year for some reason, can you apply the year for the year after? Yes, you can apply. Um, there is some kind of ruling. I think uh, if you've applied this year, I think you can you can have like two apply to the same program twice, maybe even three times. I know those are also strict national guidelines for that. I think it's it's either two or three times you can apply for the same program. But again, we hope to get rid of the fixes and then it won't matter anymore. Um, there were some questions down here. Here's, and, yeah. Everywhere there's questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's got the microphone already, so we'll do that one and then we'll do you. Go ahead. So, um, does the OMPTA math test yeah. um, replace a lacking math grade? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so Thank say you. um, either your level, say for your Dutch and you did Viscunda, say, um, but you actually are, you know, good in math and whatever, then um, you can uh, take the OMPT test. If you get 75%, then you, uh, it will consider you sufficient. Or you did Viscunda A and you have a five and a half or five and a half, six and a half or something. Then, um, yeah, if you uh, do the OMPT and you get a 75%, then we'll consider you sufficient. Do you know which uh, grade you need to obtain when you got the, the Abitur in order to be qualified uh, in English? Uh, Ten. 10 points? Yeah. Just the finishing score or? Well, if you're finished your exam, yeah, then it's 10. I think it's just still 10. But it, if it's always above 10, like yeah, all that's the fine. Years, it's yep. fine. All right. Yep. Yep. Uh, questions? Uh, yeah, there's some back there. Does not meeting the 7.0 GPA automatically kill your chances to, uh, chance to get in? Uh, no. Um, you mean if you have a dead 7.0, you mean? Yeah, let's say I got a 6.8, 6.9 GPA. Does yeah. that... Um, if you have under the minimum that we have set, um, I mean, I obviously don't have a crystal ball, so I have no idea how many applications we're going to have this year. But in the last... Well, I've worked here 12 and a half years, and every year it goes up, 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 up. So, I mean, theoretically it will stop someday, right? But... Uh, hasn't so far. We usually have about 10% uh, more than we did the year before. So we've never in the history of IBA accepted anyone with a lower GPA. And I mean, a 7.0, you have the minimum points. So in the past years, you still wouldn't have got in. Um, yeah, it's just really competitive. But I mean, again, this year, who knows? Maybe we will have, not, won't have as many people. Uh, maybe I'm scaring everyone now. So <laughs> we'll have fewer applications. And then you might get in with a, with a lower GPA. So, um, yeah, and historically speaking, yeah, if you're under a seven, definitely not, and dead seven, even still not. But again, who knows, might, might happen this year. You just want to be in tier one, basically. If you're not in tier one, you have, yeah. We've never let anyone in from another tier either, so, yeah. Um, some more questions? Thank you. 
Is there still a maximum on Dutch uh, applicants allowed? No, we don't have, we don't have, that's actually a vicious rumor that's been going around. There is no cap on nationalities, so it's not like we only accept like, so, like a certain percentage of any nationality. Um, you know, it, it, so it could be you, you have like 50 or 60 percent Dutch students, it never happened, but who knows, or you know, that many Germans. Um, it's just the best students, we really literally rank the applicants. Um, yeah, last year we had about uh, 20 percent Dutch students that got into the program. Um, yeah, we've noticed yeah, historically in the Netherlands, and your moms and dads can back me up on this, that, yeah, grades were not important in this country. So people, you know, you got a six and a half, that was great, you got in. But in the competitive programs in the Netherlands now, yeah, there's so much competitions from foreign, you know, the foreign students where it's normal to try to get the best grades you can humanly possibly get. Yeah, you're competing in an international pool of really great students. And that's one of the reasons why um, we had... Yeah, fewer. Uh, the percentage of Dutch students was lower. Um, it has been different in other years. Our, uh, we would like to have about 35% Dutch students. And we are noticing that the Dutch students are realizing, yeah, if I want to get into a program like this, I really need to get high grades so people are studying harder and, and are getting higher grades in Favio. Um, but that's, that's what's happening at the moment. So there is no quota <laughs> on any nationality. Um, yeah, there's some here. Um, how do you compare the Dutch grading system to the international system? Because, for example, an 8 here, I wouldn't say is really the same as an 88 out of the U.S. or something. Do oh, you translate not. at all? How do you do it? <laughs> yeah, very good question. Um, actually, we have... Um, uh, the Nuffic, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but the Nuffic is sort of the... the um, uh, the foundation in the Netherlands that uh, is responsible for international credential evaluation. And they did some research on um, like the grade frequency given in countries. And of course, we don't have this data for every country. We do have it within the EU. Um, and so we know, uh, yeah, for example, uh, uh, a seven in the Netherlands is like something like 25% of the students have that at the as a final exam grade. And so maybe in, in Germany, that grade is about a 2.0. And France, I think it's 14. Um, so we, we base it on grade frequency. So how often is a grade given? So, I mean, it is comparing apples with pears, but this is the, the closest we can get to a real scientific sort of fair uh, way to rank uh, applicants and compare them. And some countries, we don't have this data, so we're kind of like... Probably about right. So that's, that's uh, but I mean, the, from the countries where we admit the most students, so that's the Netherlands, the students with an uh, international baccalaureate, uh, European baccalaureate, Germany, France, and Italy, actually everything within the EU, we do have this data. So it is as comparable and as fair as, as possible. A um, couple more questions? <laughs> On the presentation next to the French baccalaureate, you, uh, there was written 14, so I guess that's the overall grade, but is there a specific requirement for math? Yes. For every, uh, yeah, off the top of my head, I don't want to say anything that's incorrect, so um, for, uh, for all of the, you know, the diplomas, most of the diplomas in the world, we have this detailed information on the website, so you can go and see for your specific diploma what the specific requirements are for GPA, math, and, and uh, um, English. Ideally, which is the average GPA that, like, for an IB enables you to ideally go inside, get picked? Good question, but I have no idea. Ah, okay. <laughs> it really depends on, on the cohort, on the year. I mean, if you have, like, 35, 36 points, then you have a pretty good chance. Uh, okay. Yeah, we, we've listed 31, but again, yeah, the minimum requirement that we have on there per diploma, you would not have gotten in last year. But again, who knows this year? Um, for Favio, usually people, you had a good chance if you had 7.3, 7.4, those, those GPAs came from the, well, last year. But again, yeah, maybe this year will be different. Okay, thank you. Um, Um, hey, I take the American Diploma, but I don't take any APs, and I think that makes you insufficient for a diploma, but my grades are high, and I've taken a TOEFL test, which passed the um, yeah. limit that you require. Would I have to take a math test, and if I do, and if I pass, would, would it be, make me sufficient, or would I need to take a foundation year? 
certain international diplomas, certainly outside the EU, um, are are deficient regardless. So if you don't have APs from the US, then you don't have a Fabio equivalent diploma. So you'll need at least one year university. Or you can, for example, go to University of Applied Science for a year. Or, um, but yeah, if you don't have the four APs, then you're not eligible for admission, unfortunately. Thank you. Yeah. There's way back there some questions. And, oh yeah, here also. Um, how many applicants do you have each year? Uh, that varies differently. As I said, it goes up by about 10% every year. So if that's the case, we'll probably have close to 3,000 this year. Last year, we had 2,700. Um, so we have quite a lot of applications. That's why we really want you to make your application early as possible and you know, make sure you upload the documents properly. Yep, be back there. In the, in the Dutch system for uh, graduating, there's of course the system where you can uh, get rid of one, uh, one mark to uh, maybe raise your, your average a bit. Yeah. Do you know from the top of your head if that also applies to the exam attaché or is nope. that just your raw points? We don't do that. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's, you do that. The Dutch government does that for your, to earn your diploma, yeah, but yeah. we don't do that, no. Yeah. Plus, no, you, okay. you don't have your diploma yet, so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, mo fair. in most cases, so. Of course. Yeah, no, we don't do that. Um, we have a few, about four more minutes, so a couple more questions. Um, do you know the percentage of uh, students that uh, graduate the bachelor compared to the number of students that got in? Um, for the IBA program, the, the number of students, uh, yeah, the graduation stipends I'm not quite sure of, but at least the, the ones who pass the first year in IBA is about, uh, well, about 18% don't pass the first year, which is very high in the Netherlands, by the way. Um, because we are selective admission, uh, we have a quite high success rate. The Dutch language program, which doesn't have... Uh, um, selective admission, they have a much higher uh, dropout rate in the first year. So, um, yeah, and uh, roughly, if, most of the time, if you pass the first year, you'll graduate. So most of those students will go on to finish the bachelor. Questions here? Oh, yeah. This one there. It's the back. It's right oh. that way. <laughs> um, do you accept predicted grades? No, we want to achieve grades. Um, the reason why we don't, uh, especially with the IB, which it's normal to work with predicted grades, we've had so many grades that the teachers are like, yeah, they're going to get these grades, and then they come in, they actually had these grades. So we're not doing that anymore. We only want earned grades. Um, there's some here, and then I think there's somebody up there. There's somebody back there. Thank you. Um, based on the previous question, for the IB diploma, we only have our exams in May, so we can't have achieved grades um, by 15 January for the application. Well, usually most schools can uh, give, a, give, you, give you some kind of actual tests that you've actually taken. It's usually based on something that's, you know, actual instead of just, you know, guesswork. But so you ask your, your teacher if they can give you some kind of achieved grades. Um, yeah, sometimes it's not possible and then we can't really do anything about it. But um, yeah, in most cases, the school is, is able to help you out. Um, we have a couple more questions. Yeah, yeah sure. down here. Um, this one. Yeah, that one, and then you can. Yeah. Um, regarding the um, IB, um, mm -hmm. do like the subjects you take, um, like do they have like say I took like physics HL, like would that have any? Would that give me a higher chance of uh, getting an application than say someone who took art HL? No, no, we don't actually, the only sub two subjects we actually look at are English and mathematics. Um, obviously, it's quite normal that you would have taken economics or in the Netherlands, uh, BACO, for example, very useful courses, but they're not required. The reason why we don't require those courses is because, um, yeah, not, and not, not every um, school system can you actually take economics in high school, so we don't require it, but you will definitely have an advantage if you have taken those courses. But we don't, uh, we don't look further at, at the courses you've taken, so. And there's one down here. Or, yeah, I don't know, two. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
you might have said this before, but what if, um, in case uh, you have gotten your uh, diploma ready, mm -hmm. you only consider the grades of the actual exam, right? Yeah, so, yeah, if you've studied the Netherlands, for example, you have your school exam and your uh, uh, central exam grades. Those grades we average per Per, uh, you know, we average together and then you have the final grades unrounded, That's, those are the grades we'll take. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I have done an Italian high school. I okay. don't know if you yeah. know yeah, we have a lot of Italian of head, students. But uh, it's, you don't consider the grades of the, of the last two No, we'll take years. your final exam Only grades. the final yeah, exam. If okay. you've graduated, yeah. Thank Another you. right behind you. <laughs> Cheers. Um, let's say hypothetically, uh, your GPA is not sufficient, mm -hmm. but your English and your math is is. Yeah. Um, and you aced your exams in, but well, in January you wouldn't be good enough. Mm -hmm. But then you aced your exams in May. Mm -hmm. Would. What are the chances then? In, then we can't get in because we've already. That's the problem with the numerous fixes. One of the reasons we hate it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the ranking comes out on the 15th of May. I mean, sorry, 15th of April. So, and we have to make the ranking with all those applications. So we have to process them. That's why these deadlines are what how they are. So, yeah, it's it's uh, as we say in Dutch, mustard not a maltide. We can't do anything about it. <laughs> so then you should apply the next year. Take a gap year. <laughs> okay, excuse we have me, sorry, uh, time sorry, for one more question, me. and then no, we no, have sorry. to wrap it up. And uh, before we break it up, um, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have lots of uh, staff uh, downstairs. You can also talk to me again downstairs at the at the stand, and we have lots more people to answer all your questions. Sorry. So one more, one yes, more question. <laughs> yeah, we are really confused with the IB because I think some other people as well. So if you don't have predicted grades, which is the only thing you have before January, okay. So, because year 11, or grade, um, grade 11, and all your, uh, what you get there in your final exam is mm -hmm. then what you predicted grade from, but it's not a real exam. The real exam is only in May, so that's after. Yeah, but you, have, you do have actual tests, right? Yes. Yeah, well, those grades are real grades. No. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're exactly, the mock ex but it's a mock exam. That's only in January, so that's too late. So, do you then take the ones from... The year before, from grade uh, from grade eleven. Yeah, grade eleven. Then your grades from grade eleven. Yes, in some education systems, there are no grades given in the last year yet, and so in that case, yeah, the decision will be made IB. of uh, on the penultimate year. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's worldwide the same for the whole yeah. IB. Yeah, we never have a problem with IB, and we have tons of IB diplomas every year. So, <laughs> okay, thank you.